guys it is sheridan welcome back to the rooted in jesus podcast today's episode is kind of scary for me to talk about because it's going to be a real raw and honest episode and i'm nervous for it i don't know how you know the topic's gonna go but i trust that the lord will guide me and direct me i've already prayed about it i guess without further ado Let's just get on with it. I may have to edit some things out because I don't want this video to be a video that's gossip or anything like that. I just want to share my experience. So I guess we'll start kind of from the beginning, but not really. I don't want to get into every single detail of everything. And there's going to be some details that I do have to share. Um, so you can understand what I went through, but a lot of details, I don't want to put people on blast, if that makes sense. Without going into too much detail, I think it's fair to go into some background with this church that I went to. This church that I went to, I truly believe that God let me be at that church that I was at for a reason, and there was a time and a season for me to be at that church. Also, you know, not everything is perfect in any church. You know, all churches have their issues and, you know, I wish there was a perfect church in the world, but the truth is humans are humans. People are going to fall short. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to let you down. But I want the lesson in this all to go back to You don't have to let people that hurt you make you turn your back on the Lord, even though it's like church hurt. If I haven't said the topic, today's topic is church hurt. What I was trying to say is the church that I was at, I feel like God had me where he wanted me at the time. I have some good stories and testimonies of how God used that church in my life in mighty ways. Um, And I'm not going to diminish that or say, you know, that I didn't enjoy my time there. But kind of how this church was when I first started going, I felt, you know, like this is where I'm supposed to be. And There was a lot of social events to go to for the young people, and I really appreciated that. I really, really did. And talk about pre-pandemic me. I was the girl that would go to every social event that I could. I would go to every Christian social event, not just anything. But every Christian social event that my church had, I wanted to be a part of it. And I wanted to meet people. I wanted to have deep godly relationships like I had at at the Bible camp that I used to work at. Um, And I still have those friendships now. But I wanted that deep connection with my church family. And it was good. I went to Bible studies. I went to every Christian social event that there was. One thing that I will say, I'm not going to get into every detail of everything. but one thing that I felt at that church pre-pandemic was the feeling of not enough, feeling like my worth didn't matter because I was just a Bible camp counselor, okay? I was just a girl who did Bible camp and worked that in the summer, and I felt really insecure about my job that I had. I felt very insecure, like being a Bible camp counselor was not respected in that church. And that is a hard pill to swallow because you want fellow Christians to support you in following the Lord, even if you don't have a lot of money. So I kind of felt like outcast as far as money goes when I was attending this church. And that's all I'll say about that. 
there's more that I could get into, but that would be drama and I'm not going to do that. So that's one thing that I'll say pre pandemic. I brushed it off and I was like, you know, I feel the Lord at this church. The things that we get to do is fun as far as youth group and stuff. And I was grateful for every opportunity that that church gave me to serve the Lord, go on different trips and conferences, appreciate all of that. All of that grew my walk with the Lord so, so much. And yeah, so that's just kind of what I'll say. And I was not going to quit going to that church, even though I felt like a little bit of an outcast. You know, I wasn't going to just leave for something like that, if that makes sense. Okay, now let's fast forward, because I don't want to make this story too long. But fast forward to the pandemic. During the pandemic, at the start of it, it was great. Um, They would have online services. And, you know, just a few people would go to the church and sing and all that stuff. And I would just worship in my room, do my normal thing, be connected to the Lord on other days than Sundays and Wednesdays. And then fast forward, you know, people start going back to church. Okay, guys, so my mic stopped recording So I hope everything is good as far as me being in frame and all of that. I'm going to just use my iPhone as a microphone and hopefully it's good enough. So I got my iPhone right here just out of frame. But anyways, I think I was at post pandemic. People were going back to normal. I went to in-person church once and I didn't feel comfortable with it. And you have your right to your own opinions and beliefs and all of that. But I just did not feel comfortable yet going back. I went back once just to try it out and see. And I just did not feel comfortable. I will not say the reasons why. But I continued to stay in contact with people at my church. Um, I was always reaching out to them. Always trying to make sure I'm praying for them and loving them despite if we're together or not. I don't want to get into everything that happened completely, but I think you guys can kind of get the gist of things. And if you don't agree with me, totally fine. You're entitled to that opinion and that's okay. But I hope you can hear my story and hear how it hurt me. And also, If you're anybody listening or watching that is from my church, I still love you and I hope you can understand better of what I went through and what God has brought me from. So anyways, fast forwarding to that, I continued to watch online services and tried to reach out to people that I thought were my friends in that church because that's the kind of person I am. I want everyone at my church to know how I care for them. I'm a person who, when I'm your friend, if you're in the body of Christ and you are a Christian, you are my brother and sister in Christ. And I want to treat you that way. I want to treat you with love and respect. I love for you deeply. I care for you deeply. I want what's best for you. I want to do my best to pray for you and you know all that stuff Um, and I'm not a perfect person God is faithful and he's brought me out of all of it things with the pandemic just kept you know kept going and it felt like there wasn't an end in sight of the pandemic so with that I had to make the decision to do what I felt like was best for me and my family. And it's a hard one. And people don't understand it. Um, and that's okay. And I'm not asking for people to understand. Basically I decided not to come back to church in person. But I still wanted that fellowship. And all of that with people at my church. As we got deeper and deeper into the pandemic, I made lots of online friends, so much fellowship with Zoom worships, discipleship online. There was so much things that was getting poured into me. Plus, you know, 
watching online church and stuff. But I began to finally talk to one of my friends, kind of how I was feeling with people at my church. And there was more things going on, and I'm not going to get into that whole thing that happened. But a part of it was this. I was talking to one of my friends, one of my godly friends, and I was talking to her about this, and I was like, am I crazy? I told her kind of how I felt like an outcast about money and about feeling like, even though this is a church, me doing ministry and not having a whole lot of money made me feel kind of like an outsider and like I didn't belong I don't think I should get into that either. Um, But there was also things that people would do, you know. I can say this, but I feel like people would treat me differently outside of the four walls than inside, if that makes sense. Not like when we would do stuff at youth group, but I guess I wanted people to want a friendship with me um, outside of the four walls. And a lot of people did not try to make an effort I talked to my friend I'm so sorry about this story being very jumbled but I talked to my friend about it and she said that I wasn't crazy and I continued to pray about it you know right when she told me that you're it's probably in your best interest to leave and to find another church because what people are doing isn't right And I didn't want to hear that because I thought, oh, I'm just being a petty person. And then a big situation happened. And it was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking, that situation that happened. And I had that conversation with my pastor at the time. And I told him, hey, I have to leave. This is how I feel. Also told my close friends that I had at that church how I was feeling, how I was feeling lonely during this pandemic season. I think it's just wrong, honestly, that if some of your congregation tell you how they feel and you do not try to fix anything. Because I still left the door open to people in my church and I message people privately about what went on and all of that when they have your number they can call on you they can check on you um and they don't do that and they just are like that's okay you know if you want to leave and you know not try so that really hurt and I guess we'll just get into the hurt that I've experienced through it So, me deciding to leave the church was in July of 2021. So, throughout 2020, I was doing all online, and I tried to stick it out as long as possible, but it took that conversation with my friend to tell me, hey, she's a godly woman who I had this conversation with, telling me, hey, it's okay, you cannot let people treat you this way. Also, I know people are flawed. People make mistakes. People have other things to do in their life, but it's hard and just it breaks your heart when you love and care so deeply about each and every person at your church. The people that I made friendships with, the people that I thought I was closest to, the people that I prayed for constantly, the people that I you know, wanted to have that close godly friendship where they could pray for me and I could pray for them. And, you know, it's just a hard thing to go through. From July of last year till January, I would have these off and on seasons of feeling so, so rejected, feeling like they don't care about me. Feeling like the church doesn't care about me. Feeling like, how can I go on? How can I live? It was hard. It was so, so hard. I can't tell you the nights, how many nights I cried my eyes out and had to listen to music to get me through it. 
to stay positive and to hold on to the Lord. The nights of tears and prayers and asking people to pray for me that were in my Bible study groups online because it hurt so deeply. It was like a cut that somebody just cut my heart open. It was so, so bad. It was one of the worst experiences of my life. And a lot of people closest to me don't even know this. This is me getting this out in the open for the first time. People don't know the nights that I sat up late and cried my eyeballs out. And the only thing that would get me through was prayer and listening to the song by Lisa Cimarelli called Fix You. I've talked about the song Fix You before in old podcast episodes because I really wasn't open to talking about the situation yet because it was still a hurtful wound that just cut me to the core but the song fix you talks about and it's a secular song when I listen to it it says lights will guide you home and it talks about like I I can try to fix you and when I hear that song I've talked about it before on the podcast but I felt like I was so broken and the only person who could fix me was the Lord And the only healing process was just feeling my pain and crying and coming to the Lord in prayer and trusting that God is the light that's going to guide me to where I'm supposed to be through this hard situation. Through this hard situation, I see I could have easily walked away from the church and said, no, church is not for me. Jesus is not for me. No, I'm done. I could have easily let that be it. But I chose to persevere and keep the faith and realize that, yes, people are flawed, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. People let me down, but God does not let me down. I feel this excruciating pain, but God is my healer. It was such a hard situation to go through, and God only knows those moments. God only knows that from July till January of this year I would have days where I was fine and then I would have nights where it would just hit me and I would feel so rejected so lonely from people that I thought loved the Lord and loved me and when I say that I truly believe that those people do have a walk with the Lord but they hurt me deeply And I thought that they loved me like the Lord tells us that we're supposed to love people. And when they let me down and that hurt came, it was a hard pill to swallow. The process of forgiveness has been a big, huge process. And I may make a separate video on that. But one verse that stands out to me is in Ephesians. And it took from July of 2021 until November for me to fully forgiving them and forgiveness is a choice forgiveness is a choice that you have to continually make and there would be nights when I would cry and be angry and upset but I would choose forgiveness I would say God this is hard God this hurts I choose to forgive them and it's going to be a choice that I'm going to have to make daily because these feelings are so deep and so fresh and it's going to take me a while to heal. I knew that the Lord would walk with me through that pain and I just hope that this video can show you guys that you can heal and the church hurt was so real so deep but God is a healer and since January I can truly say in my heart, I do forgive them and I do love them. And if one day God wanted me to go back to that church, I would because we are called to be obedient to the Lord. We are called to love unconditionally. Even when people hurt us, we're called to love and we're called to forgive. Why did I make this podcast episode? Because I felt ready 
and because I feel like somebody out there may feel so lonely, may feel so rejected from the church. You know, they may feel like they can't forgive somebody, but God is able to help you to forgive people that have hurt you. This verse, Ephesians says to be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So we are called to forgive people. And there's also a verse that says we're called to forgive because Jesus forgives us. Um, so forgiveness is important. And forgiveness is a lesson that I've learned through this experience. I hope that this podcast wasn't too all over the place. I guess I'm just going to end it here. I could probably go more into loneliness and all that kind of stuff. But God is faithful. He sent me the resources and things that I needed at the right time. Um, He sent me friends at the right time. And he helped me even though... There were so many nights that I cried and there were so many nights and days where it was hard to forgive, but I had to choose forgiveness. And now I can look at the people from my old church and say, I forgive them. I love them. I still pray for them. I hope one day we can maybe be in each other's lives. Maybe that's not a part of God's plan. It's just a beautiful testimony That you can go through church hurt and you don't have to let it destroy you. You don't have to let that church hurt take away your faith. But you can put your faith in God and trust that I have Jesus right now. And that feels like all that I have. But that is all that I need. And God will get me through even when you feel like you cannot do it anymore. God is faithful. He is there for you and he loves you and he cares for you. And if you're going through church hurt, reach out to me. Message me on Instagram if you're feeling that way because I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to pray for you because it's a hard thing to go through and you don't have to do it alone. God's got you. Even if you are alone in it, God is with you through it. But I love you guys and I hope that this story helped you in some way. I hope that this made sense. If it didn't, I don't know what to do. But if you like this podcast episode, please give it a rating if you're on Apple Podcasts. And subscribe to it if you're on YouTube and like it. And I will see you guys in the next episode. I love you guys so, so much. And keep being rooted in Jesus. Bye, guys.